presenting genius in 18 minutes. This isn't intended to be the game-changing, life-altering TED Talk. Today, I'll simply be talking about slam poetry and how that altered my life. Poetry. So at that three-day unit in my seventh grade English class, a couple lines, rhymes, throwing a haiku or two, and bada-bing, bada-boom, I've got a poem? Not quite. I like to say, you cannot be a liar and a slam poet at the same time, because slam poetry is telling the truth, usually the truth that hurts the most. Slam poets do not say what you want them to say. They say it like it is. Let me show you. Men, manly, masculine, tell me, what is a man? Show me, what is a man made of? I pass men on streets and I don't know their names, their edges, their edges, their edges, what else? Men, they are rough. They are brushed teeth, blue toothbrush, Hanes underwear, and cologne that smells like a man, and hair like a man, and men are knuckles and arms, men are bicycles, oh, he's going round and round, men are bicycles, men are bicycles, men are bicycles, what else? They are, they are whiskey, not wine coolers. They are punch, not touch. They are tot, not stretch. They are cars and factories. They are war games. They are sticks as swords. They are sticks as dicks. They are either freshly mown grass or bare winter trees, but they can't get warm. They are the Navy Pier. They can't get real. They all want to be the small gods that litter Chicago like skyscrapers. They are standing tall. They are standing tall. They are standing tall. They are struggling not to fall. They are freezing to death. They are getting fat with the fake because tourist America doesn't care about deep like Michigan. They just want to take pictures of the lights. Men, there are lights burning out. What else? They are, they are men, they are men, they are dying out. What are we doing to our men? Why are we just feeding them meat every night? Where can a guy get an apple around here? Because Eve isn't the only one with curves. I've seen men that curl into themselves when they sleep. I've seen men tired. I've seen men fall, not from a fight, but from the inside. I know men are more than black eyes. They are pink hearts. I've seen it. So give me boys so pretty they look like glass, doe eyes, hollow bones, tight ass. These aren't just descriptors of women. I want these to be real men. Give me men and red lipstick. Give me men painted pink. Give me men painted yellow. Give me men who aren't afraid to paint. Tell me, why do men want to be police officers and sports stars? Why can't little boys say aerospace engineer, say scientist? Are they all brawn but no brains? Why can't little boys say model, say movie star, say ballerina? It's too pretty. Little boys, they have to be dirty. Why can't boys say author, artist, poet? Too deep for them to dig down? Afraid they will hit the rock bottom of their masculinity? Well, give me men, not rocks. Give me men who let you hold then. Give me men who don't practice war cries because they are too afraid to cry. Give me boys who say, I look damn good in dresses, and I like it when my nails are painted, and this girl told me I was beautiful once, and I won't forget it. Give me men with eyelashes longer than mine. Give me men with a little extra chub. Give me men with a lot of extra chub. Give me men skinny, men lanky, men they don't know what to do with their limbs. They were taught to be muscle, but they were not taught to be tender. So give me men who like to stretch out in the sun like cats and read gossip magazines and blow out dandelions like wishes because wishing isn't just for women. And beauty and love and giggling and kiss your best friend because if you're a girl, it's not gay and receiving flowers and chocolate and shitty stuffed toys isn't just for girls. It's just as hot to see two guys kiss because in general, it's pretty hot to see people kiss. It's just as easy for me to buy you flowers. You deserve flowers, because people deserve flowers. And that's the thing. I'm so tired of these pronouns getting mixed up. So tired of all these generalizations tying us up. Let us be people already, damn men. Manly, masculine. What is a man? Stop. Questions weren't made to limit. Questions weren't made to close. Questions open, question not. What is a man? Question, what is a human? <laughs> Thank you.
that felt good. And hopefully I loosened you guys up a bit. You look pretty tense. That was something I wrote a couple weeks ago when my little brother turned 14. He's a teenager now, but he's not just another teenage boy. I wanted to tell him that truth, so I wrote a poem about it. Rooted in hip hop, slam poetry is a whirlwind of rap, truth, words, and feelings. Slam is made to be spoken, but more importantly, it is composed of the things you have to say. I've written poems my parents said never to perform again, never to show them again. But I would be a very different person standing on this stage if I hadn't said those words aloud. This February, I tried out for my school's Louder Than a Bomb slam poetry team, thinking it would turn out to be kind of a joke. Well, last month, our team took five poets and a busload of supporters to perform and cry and laugh at the Gem Theater in Kansas City as one of the top four teams in the region. Louder Than a Bomb is, an in, is a national poetry competition that began in Chicago. It has now grown to be the largest slam poetry competition in the nation, and the winners of our regional finals go to Atlanta this summer to an international competition with poets from all over the world. We took fourth due to point deductions from overtime poems, but we took a lot more away than the points. Every time I would go on stage, my heart would freak out and say, no, don't you dare tell those strangers your secrets, and yes, please get this off your chest. Every time, the audience would cheer and the scores would go up, but it was the girl in the third row with tears in her eyes that made it worth it. It was my coaches grinning, my best friend grabbing me for a hug, the cute guy that told me that was awesome. It was slam poetry. And I'd finally said what I needed to say. And these strangers, they were all listening. Now, I felt like I'd finally found that thing. Though I'd been going to poetry slams at the library for years, I finally knew what a real slam poet looked like. But I'll get to that later. Before I do my next poem, I want to teach you some poetry etiquette. I noticed you were kind of quiet. <laughs> and most people think that you just snap at the end of poems and all poets perform in dimly lit, moody coffee houses. Most people would be wrong. At my poetry slams, you snap after every line that really hits you and says something important. You also snap if a poet seems to be forgetting a line, which I may. <laughs> At the end, you get up, you hoot, you holler, you cheer. Paseo Academy, who actually won our regional competition, began a chant that our team sort of adopted. It goes like this. I love you, poet. I, I ain't never gonna stop loving you, poet. Okay, so practice with me. When I point at you, say, poet, I love you. Poet. I ain't never going to stop loving you. Poet. All right, can I get a volunteer to do the I love you's at the end of my next poem? Zach, go ahead. <laughs> you know the lines? I love you. I ain't never going to stop loving you. All right, great. And though we won't be putting up scores today, thank God. <laughs> When a judge puts up a score you think should be higher for a poem, yell, listen to the poem. But in the end, our motto is, the point is not the points, the point is the poetry. Okay. Intimacy, tearing up our lips, thrashing in the sheets, tossing, turning, not with bodies intertwined. This bad sleep is a result of bad luck. And since absences are better noticed at night, my skin itches for you to tear me up. Use your teeth. I want to be torn and turned out into the skinny, breathless wind where boys cry like ghosts and girls don't have to feel real. But I'm glued to my window pane, and I can taste winter like you used to taste me. They all talk between purple lips filled with snow. And that's how you know. Clumsy boys. I once knew boys. Clumsy, blowing away boys, they exhaled their cigarette smoke, and I pretended not to notice their words smelled like trains racks. 
and not the romantic kind. These boys are driving your car to the tracks, putting on the brakes, turning off the heat, and hearing the screech and shake. Metal on metal, and clumsy boys are lying, but so is I. Clumsy boys are hurting, but so am I, tracing the outlines of my hip bones, carving their names into my pelvis with exacto knives. Boys who pulled my hair, and boys that asked for it all, and in return, I ate them alive. I would throw up afterwards, but if I could take a whole person inside me, surely I was whole. Empty calories they were, I couldn't care less. Give me this, give me that. Aren't we all just bodies and pheromones anyway? My femininity? No. It became my definition, my sultry, my sallow skin, and my t eyes with suitcases underneath, and my tiny arms that didn't match my legs anymore. My, oh my, I was just a child. I was just a child. Intimate as new snow. Play in chess like it could always be black and white, your bishop against my thighs. I did not know. I did not know intimacy. Not unbuttoning, nor unrelenting. Intimacy used to be when I told a boy, if you like Chicago, I like Chicago too. Intimacy used to be when I wrote a whole religion based on the way others loved me forgetting how holy it was that I loved others. Now, intimacy is when I told my mother I loved her for the first time in four months. Intimacy, spending a whole summer watching movies with my little brother. The basement was the only place we could cool off, but I was so thankful for some real heat. Intimacy with four friends in the backseat of a pickup, laughing with stars tangled in our hair and falling on our tongues. Intimacy, not something found between legs or seen between lips, but held between two fingers, cradled between two arms. I love you. Poet. 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 Thank you, thank you. Uh, that poem may seem kind of heavy for 10 a.m., <laughs> but it was the first poem I performed in the Louder Than a Bomb competition, and it's about the first lesson I learned in high school. I kind of tried to keep the truth like a secret from myself. But eventually, I had to admit it and write a poem about it. So here's a secret I have about poetry. When I said I finally knew what a slam poet looked like, I was lying. I don't know what a slam poet looks like. I don't look like a slam poet. I am five foot, and I'm wearing quite a bit of eyeliner, and I've seen poets in tattered t-shirts, I've seen six, five football players break my heart on stage, I've seen fat girls and skinny girls and transgenders, and the secret is, I'm looking out at all of you, and all I see is you. Take a minute. Consider yourself not as little old Morgan or Mariah or Ella, but Morgan, the slam poet, Mariah, the slam poet, Ella, the slam poet. You, you're a slam poet. Stop lying to yourself. You have truths that need to be told, so tell them. Now, when people hear that, they say, well, how do I write a slam poem then? <laughs> My answer is never going to suffice. But I always suggest taking your truth, whether it be your gender identity, your anxiety or your family's money problems, and make a list. Write your truth at the top and under it list every scent, every memory, every touch, taste, and person and thought you have about that topic for five minutes. Read it out loud. There's your slam poem. It might not make sense yet, but take one line you really like, put in your headphones, and work around it. And if you're really stuck, I have another secret. All great artists steal. So open up YouTube and go to the channels Button Poetry or Speak Easy NYC and watch all of the videos on their pages. You'll start to get a feel for what this world of slam poetry really is. Now, my final poem was finished at 10 p.m. on Thursday night. <laughs> but if you take anything away from this talk, let it be this poem. Exhaust and body leaking, exhaust fumes, exhaust fumes, car engine busted, out of gas and out of time. This isn't the Indy 500, but it could be. 
I'd race you if I weren't sputtering, coughing up fumes, fender bender. I've been on benders, but this time I'm bending out of shape. Body in my car wrecked, collision, collision with exhaustion, racing circles ain't getting me out of here. Soot and smokestacks, factory bodies breaking down. Collapsing upon knees, kneeling, worship God till the day you die. I never want to die, but I could use some sleep. So tuck me into the assembly line, piece me together, Henry Ford. You're a revolutionary with dusty eyelids and dry hands. I'm ready to be boxed up and shipped out, but I'm so broke. Body of plastic toys, they melt so easily, and I'm freezing cold, but I can feel my sweat sliding. I'm sliding, sliding me down the chimneys. Kids might be disappointed. Santa lives in a factory. Elves like machines, they got machinations. Santa's big bag of crips and things, and that's all he's got. Pockets turned out. And this is all I've got. Body spilling oil like blood, staining shirts like nosebleeds, fuel like veins, and I need an IV. Body leaking extra hands and extra fingers. Don't need so many arms if I'm done juggling. I'd be a circus. I'd be, I'd be an empty circus tent all out of shows. See, my body is many, so my body can be circus tent too. Pretend me for a day, pretend me for a year, pretend me for a night, and I'll show you right. I'll show you stars so dark, you'll eat them like hearts. I'll show you something you'll want to eat. I'll show you my heart, then I'll show you my arm, show you what I've learned these past few months, one condition. You just got to tell me the truth about these bags under my eyes. All circus freaks have suitcases, and I more than most. Let's set them on fire tonight. Car parts falling out. Racetrack forgot to go somewhere. Machines and factories, Santa and assembly lines. Oil and bloody fingers. Eat my heart away. Set the circus on fire. Put me to sleep. I take five naps a day, but where's the REM? I take sleeping pills, so where's the sleep? I wrote this whole poem in the dark because I'm so tired of looking at what I've done to this poetry. Poetry like Adderall trying to keep me awake. Poetry like ecstasy on my best days. Poetry, I am so damn tired. But this is the most important work I will ever do. So I will stay up one more night. Poetry. I will stay up for you. And on that note, remember, you are a slam poet, and slam poets tell the truth no matter what. Thank you for your time.